Hey everybody, DJ Chance here. Now in today's video, I just wanted to cover one of these old apps that I forgot about and I kind of used to enjoy. Let's get right into it. So I'm gonna start off with what I have here. Now these are two first generation iPads and I bought these iPads specifically to use for this purpose. I had a surgery back then and I was out of commission for a while, but I was still booked every week and I couldn't just stop doing gigs and Technique 1200s inside of a case weigh a good 55 pounds, something like that. I could no longer carry them the way I used to because I didn't want to hurt myself. So I said, you know, this thing weighs a pound and a half. I can carry three pounds. So it was perfect at the time. And this company called Inklin, which a lot of people know through using Mix Emergency. It was an app they had for video DJs and it was a great app for that purpose back in the day. So they came out with the equivalent of having a control vinyl or a control CD for your CDJ or your turntables. So I bought it in the app store back then and figured if this works well, this is the solution to my problem. I want to say it was back in 2010, I saw this software at one of the DJ expos and I thought this is exactly what I'm looking for. So the app at the time was $7.99. Now the app is no longer supported in the app store. I don't think it's available on the Play Store never really looked into it. I'm such a diehard Apple fan that that bite you see in the logo, that's actually my mouth. I took that bite out of that apple. That was me. Little known fact. So not only did I drink the apple Kool-Aid, I also bit into it. Yum. Yum. So let's start off with turning these suckers on. All right. Notice that we have the widget here with the tone table app. We're gonna hit those immediately. And you'll see that the Inkland name came up. And you can see immediately that we have these virtual platters on the screens. And you've got all these various little controls on here. The play and pause both are this play button. They'll light up in blue when you're actually playing. And not only that, you see it spinning. So the software by Inkland came defaulted with a control tone of one kilohertz. But you could change it into four different kilohertz tones for different software. So if I went into my settings, You'd see at the top the various settings you have. You have your 33 RPM, and if you press that, you'd be able to switch the platter spinning speed to 45 RPM. So let's go back. Well, coming back. Let me lift this up so you can see this a little better. You'll see right there, we'll hit the frequency. It's defaulted at one kilohertz because that was the scratch live frequency tone that you had. 1.2 was, I believe, torque. 1.3 kilohertz was mix vibes, and I believe um, Decadence was the other one. Two kilohertz was for tractor scratch. So I'm gonna put it back to its defaulted one kilohertz. Right underneath that, you see reverse phase. Reverse phase is just playing the song backwards. So I'll go back to the beginning. Let me play a beat that I have here. And I'll go back to reverse phase. And even though it's still spinning forward, it's actually playing backwards. If you're really old school, you're thinking of the Beastie Boys right now. All right, so let's go back into those settings. We're gonna turn that reverse off. Now the pickup is actually the speed at which, when you hit play, the platter gets up to speed. So you can adjust that to your heart's content wherever you like it. Power down should just have said braking because that's exactly what it is. I mean, some people used to turn the physical knob of the turntable off to get that powering down. That's kind of where the name came from. Underneath that's the keyboard tuning note. I'm gonna show you what that does a little bit later. I wanna knock out these other ones. Now your marker color is what you would be able to color the little sticker part right here. So you see I have mine is white. It's so white, it's so clean. I would go into the settings and let's say marker color. Let's say I wanna do it in blue. Hit tone table, go back, I'm done. Now you see it's a blue marker. So we'll go back there. You can also change the color of your label. Let's put it yellow for the purpose of this, just so you can see it change. So now I got yellow and blue. We can also go back and change the actual color of the vinyl. Let's do a fuchsia mauve vinyl. It looks like an Easter egg. So now we have all these colors color, color, color. that look like, I, I don't even know. I can't even stare at that too long. 
Now this other little indicator that you have next to the cog wheel, and that is to move around where the platter itself goes. So you can see you can do all of this stuff here, move it wherever you want. I wanted more of this platter showing there. So I'll adjust it right to the edge there. Then you tap that again. Bam, bam, bam. And you have it exactly where you need it to be. And this is the interesting part. You just hit that plus or minus and there you have your pitch. And you had plus or minus 8%. That's all you were able to go on this. But there was a way to cheat on here. And that's going back to that keyboard tuning frequency. So if you go back to your tuning frequency, you see the keyboard tuning note is at C. I can change that here to be whatever my center frequency is. What that is actually, these little performance pads pictured here that you see, you could actually get a little bit more speed by using this keyboard. Now if I was using just the tone control, I'd be able to manipulate this to make the tone control like if I was playing an actual keyboard because it's just a one kilohertz signal but I'd be able to actually play it. Basically, if you wanted faster speeds than that plus or minus 8%, adjusting where your center frequency is, like here, my baseline speed starts right here in this button. But let's play the track. If I start hitting these buttons, you're gonna hear that the speed is gonna start to increase and then come back down as I come down this keyboard. So this is the first step. Right now I'm at 0% pitch control. So I'm going to hit the next one and it's going to jump up a few percentage points. So now without me touching anything, my Serato DJ software shows that I'm at plus 6%. And now hitting the next one, I'm at 12.3%. And now I'm at 19% and then it keeps increasing all the way up to a hundred percent and then I can you know come down eight percent so if you needed to do a transition this is how I was able to do it back then so that was just an interesting way that they addressed not having plus or minus 16 or 50 percent back in the day and that's how I used to cheat because people used to be like I don't know how you do that with the iPads I I never I've never heard anyone do transitions with an iPad and of course, everyone thought I was a sellout. They're like, how dare you? How dare you show up with iPads? And wait, 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 hold on. I want to make sure you hear this because it's embarrassing as hell. And you may think differently of me after this. I actually went into the booth of a couple of clubs that had turntables, but I didn't bring any needles. I only brought my iPads and I actually took this iPad and placed it on top of the turntable surface. And so there were a couple nights I was really embarrassed because no self-respecting DJ back then would have ever put anything on top of a Technique 1200 or a CDJ, but I was that guy, I did it. It was me! But let me tell you, that served me well for a few years. It was the best money I had spent because there was no way. The money I would have lost had I had to give up a year's worth of gigs while I was going through therapy, nah, this was totally worth it. The big thing that helped back then too was these right here, the Novation Dicers. They made it possible for me to be able to mix at all because without these Dicers, I wouldn't have been able to play at the same level. So having the Dicers with this just gave me all the capability that I had back then with using a turntable and Dicers, but I was able to use it in this little compact package. I actually stuck the dicers to my empath. They're removable, so I can just take them off. It made the transition to using these iPads just seamless for me. So I was able to just play my track and do the same thing on this one. The only real drawback there was to these for someone like myself was that it didn't lend itself to scratching. It's not precise with scratching, not really at all. Not even at all. I mean, you could, but it wasn't the best. All right, let me turn this microphone off so you don't hear all the clicking and stuff.
Yeah, that sounds awful. That actually sounds like a couple guys I know that have been DJing for 15 years. They still don't know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I know at least a little bit more, but that that is, it's a dreadful sounding scratch. Definitely wasn't able to do a lot of scratches with that. Like holding it, maybe doing a transformer or something like that, I was able to do really not an orbit either because as soon as you let it go, the latency that there was for this, the lag, you know, you know if you're a gamer, that's one of the worst words in the world, lag. So the lag between this and what you actually heard was horrible. That was me doing a crab and it, it, it there was no crab. It was like Alaska in the season of 2022. There's no crabs. The latest version of the software that you could use with this app, Serato 2.5.5. Now, whether you say Serato or Serato, I know people get on me in the comment section that I say it a weird way. I'm not Mojax. Serato is the one of- You know what, just on purpose, because I'm petty, I'm gonna per mispronounce it on purpose. I'm gonna call it Serato. So you had to have Serato 2.5.5, or maybe you have an old laptop with Scratch Live. I do know a lot of DJs that still use Scratch Live because they're still kind of turntableist at heart and all of the Serato DJ Pro features, they don't really use effects and samples and triggers. They still have dicers built into the corner of their techniques and that's fine. Once you're in your software, you have to go into relative mode. Relative mode is how you'd be able to access using these as if they were turntables. If you want to trigger any of your samples, whether you do it from a keyboard shortcut or you do it from a dicers, or maybe you had that Denon 1000, that little piece that was kind of like the dicers, but it was one singular piece. The song has to be in play mode. You have to see these spinning in order to trigger these. Also next to the pitch control, I forgot to mention, that this plus or minus is a nudging feature. So that way, if you were trying to get a precise mix and you couldn't really touch the platter, you had no wheel to touch, you could hit the minus or plus sign to slow it down or speed it up so you can get the perfect mix. Yeah, you hear that? You see how it's speeding up? And it's gonna continue to speed up the longer you hold it. Now I'm at plus 56%. All right, so I'm at plus four and a half percent on Serato. See, it takes a little bit though. Like I'm holding it down, now I'm at minus 15%. Now we're back normal. All right, let's get into this mix. Hopefully it sounds good because it's going on the internet. And you know, once it's in the internet, it's there forever. Let's kill this mic so you don't hear the button pressing and all the clicking and all that. Let's kill that. So there you go. There's a quick run through of Tone Table by Inkland. If you already have it, 
you know, pull it back out and dust off those iPads, those old iPhone 4s and plug those in and just have a little bit of fun with it. Sometimes it's good to break out old pieces of gear. One thing I forgot to mention with using this, these don't plug directly into the laptop. I forgot to mention, these are actually plugged in to the control box. And if I can get it out of these tight wires, maybe I can show you. So I actually have it plugged into my SL3. That's a mess of wires you hear. A whole bunch of stuff just fell back there. But anyway, you were to, you'd were you come out of your iPads and go into the control box and outputs into my Rain Empath mixer here. So there you have it. That is Tone Table by Inklin and my Dicers and my first gen iPads and my old Rain Empath mixer and my Rain SL3 control box. What do you think of iPad DJing? I know what people thought of it back then. I got an earful for a lot of people. I want to thank everyone for all the love and support and positivity I've received on this channel. Check my other videos. So I'm going to be doing more stuff like this, breaking out old pieces of gear. I'm going to be doing my favorite pieces. I'm going to do lines of products that people forgot about. So there's going to be a lot of good stuff in the works. And again, thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing with a friend, commenting, hitting the notification bell, all that stuff. It helps the channel tremendously, and I'll see you in the next video.